Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at representing functions. We are going to answer the question, what are different ways functions can be represented and what are key features of functions? So is it a function is a relationship where each input has an output. They are dependent where the input or the independent variable will determine the output or the dependent variable. We can input a number into the function to find the matching output. And besides these words, there are other terms for the input and output, which can be remembered by Dixie and Roy D, um, which let's talk about what those represent. So Dixie is all of the input values. So that first I stands for input, the D stands for domain, the X stands for X value, and the I stands for independent. All of those mean input. And then Roy D, the O stands for output, the R stands for range, the Y stands for Y values, and the D stands for dependent. So domain and range are probably the new terms um, that you are hearing today. Hopefully you've heard the other ones before. Domain and range are new in Algebra 1, and you'll hear a lot more about them throughout this course. So let's take a look at the first example. It says, use the verbal description to complete the other representations of the function. A local cookie delivery company, Tasty Sweets, charges a $4 delivery fee plus $2 per cookie. And the question it wants us to answer is what are the independent and the dependent variables? So the independent will determine the dependent. So the independent here, sometimes it's easier to think about the dependent. The dependent is the output. So the output is going to be the total cost in dollars. That'll be the Y value. And what determines the total cost? Well, the number of cookies that you buy. So that would be the independent. Or what we're going to use to represent the X values. And now it wants us to write an equation to represent the total cost Y based on the amount of cookies ordered X. So our total cost will be that $4 delivery fee. So $4 plus $2 per cookie, so 2x, since we talked about how cookies were the independent or x values. Now it wants us to complete the table to represent the cost based on 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 cookies ordered. So first thing I need to do is say what the x and y represent. x is the number of cookies. And then y is the total cost. Okay, and they told us how many cookies they want us to figure out. One, two, three, four, or five cookies. And then we wrote an equation for the total cost and it told us in the word problem what the total cost is. It is four plus two X. So what I would do here is do four plus two times one to figure out the cost for one cookie which would be six. And then four plus two times two would be eight. Four plus two times three would be 10. Four plus two times four would be 12. And then four plus two times five would be 14. So there's the cost for one cookie two, three, four, and five. Now the next part wants us to create a graph to represent the cost, which we just determined in the table for one, two, three, four, and five cookies. And it wants us to label the axis. So this is the X axis and this is the Y axis. So X was the cookies and then Y is the cost. So I can just scale this by ones since I just have one, two, three, four, or five cookies that will fit there. But I think I need to count by twos on the Y axis to fit all of that in. Okay, now I should be able to plot these points. So one, six, one cookie cost $6, two cookies was $8, three cookies was 
three was ten dollars, four was twelve dollars, and five was fourteen dollars. And I am not going to draw a line to connect these because this is what we call a discrete relationship. They're not going to let us order like one and a half or one and a quarter or 2.1 cookies. It's only going to be one, two, three, four, or five cookies that they let us order. So that's what we call discrete. It is disconnected data. All right, let's look at five and six. It just wants us to determine the independent and dependent variables in these descriptions below. So number five says Jackson is buying movie tickets for himself and his friends. The more tickets he buys, the greater the cost. So I need to determine the independent and the dependent. So the dependent is the output and it seems like the output is going to be the total cost. And what is going to determine that is how many tickets he buys. All right, number six says, as the amount of rain decreases, so does the water in the river. So I need to determine the independent variable here and the dependent. So the dependent is the outcome. It seems like the outcome is going to be the amount of water in the river. And what is going to determine that? the amount of rain.